Thank you. Well, hello everyone. I'm Sarah Holly. I am the director of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health. Um, on behalf of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health, our Environmental Health Division and Ramsey County Property Management, I wanna welcome everyone to our Environmental Service Center open house. This is one of um, four open houses. We've had um, two so far, one virtual and one in person. Um, and we have another one next week that's um, in person. So we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, we're glad that you all are able to join us. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here. Um, we are recording, as you see, um, this virtual gathering and it will be available on our website. Um, your phone lines um, are muted at this time. Um, any questions that you have, please make um, a note of that for our discussion section and time together today. You can also put your questions in the chat box if that's easier. Um, and we are looking forward to offering a variety of options at the end of our presentation today um, for you to provide feedback. All right, next slide, please. All right, so today you'll have a chance um, to hear um, from staff, as I mentioned, from our Environmental Health Division and Ramsey County Property Management. Um, I wanna mention that we are joined by Ray Eden Frank. She's our in interim division manager for environmental health here at Ramsey County. And we're also joined by director Jean Kruger. She's our director of property management um, here at Ramsey County. Um, um, our objectives for today's um, gathering are really to in introduce the Enhancing Environmental Services Initiative. Um, and then of course, discuss proposed plans for an environmental service center. And then of course, hear from you um, at the end of the presentation today. Um, next slide, please. Um, before I get into our um, group agreements, I wanna recognize that I do see um, a few people that have joined us. I wanna recognize Deputy County Manager, Joanna Berg. She's here with us um, this afternoon. She is the Deputy County Manager economic growth and community investment here in Ramsey County. I also want to recognize, I see Commissioner McGuire um, logging in and connecting um, her audio at this time to the Zoom call. Um, and so if I miss anybody else that was in leadership at Ramsey County or any elected officials, please let me know. Um, just a few group agreements as we're in this virtual environment. Um, we want to most definitely have you share your thoughts and be open-minded um, to the initiative and project that we're going to discussed this afternoon. Um, listen actively and respectfully when others are speaking. Um, speak from your own experience instead of generalizing. Um, if you have a question, please ask it respectfully and refrain from any personal attacks. We do ask that you step up and step back. Um, and so just share the space with one another. Um, turn your camera on if you're able, especially when speaking. Uh, we'll take down the slideshow once we get towards the end. Um, mute your microphone when not speaking. Um, and then of course, add those questions and comments in the chat if that is more comfortable for you. Um, just wanna mention, checking the attendance list. All right. So at all of our public um, events and meetings and um, particularly at our county board meetings every Tuesday, um, we read our land acknowledgement that Ramsey County has adopted. So I wanna take a moment to do that before we move into the presentation. Every community owes um, its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life and some have lived on this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect, connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We are standing on the ancestral lands of the Dakota people. We wanna acknowledge the Ojibwe, the Ho-Chunk, and the other nations of people who also call this place home. We pay respects to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the treaties made by tribal nations, that entitle non-Native people to live and work on traditional Native lands. Consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. All right, with that, I wanna turn it over to Interim Division Manager, Raylene Frank. Ray? Thank you, Director Holly. Thank you for all being here this evening and joining us. We're 
uh, excited for you to be here and to share with you some of our ideas and um, plans moving forward. So I wanna take a moment to ground us here in Ramsey County and some of the goals and strategic priorities that we have as a county. Um, the county has four goals around well-being, prosperity, opportunity, and accountability. The project that we're gonna be talking about tonight, the Environmental Service Center, is um, really in line with our county goal of well-being, which states strengthen individual, family, and community well-being through innovative programming, prevention, and environmental stewardship. The county also has a number of strategic priorities, um, and one of them is residents first, effective, efficient, and accessible operations. Uh, and this is really another key component of the project we're meeting about tonight. Next slide, please. So you may be wondering what is an environmental service center? And probably if you're here, you know a little bit and have some ideas, but we wanna give a little bit of a foundation for that. So an environmental service center is really a facility for the collection and transfer of household hazardous waste, which, uh, also food scraps, yard waste, electronics, and other recyclables. When we're talking about household hazardous waste, we're talking about things such as um, cleaning supplies, paints, uh, used oil, pesticides, any of the things you might use in your garden for gardening or for painting your home or cleaning your home um, that are ca categorized as, as household hazardous waste. Um, another component of uh, environmental center, service center could be space for a, a reuse room, uh, community education, fix-it clinics, um, and other types of um, areas such as community gardens um, and things like that. And we'll get into a little bit more detail about that. So next slide. So you might be familiar with our current Ramsey County Household Hazardous Waste Collection Site. This is the building. These are the actual photos of the building that's owned and operated by Bay West and St. Paul on Empire Drive. This is where we currently provide our household hazardous waste management uh, collection. We have a reuse room. Um, really, this uh, facility is focused and designed to focus primarily on environmental protection. And our current services, um, which are, as I said, owned and operated by Bay West, they're really doing a, a great job. They do a great job of what they do. They provide many of the services that are listed on the previous slide. Um, however, there's some limitations. Um, the, the space is tight during peak hours. Um, there's lacking of loading docks and no availability for expansion. Uh, there's not a large enough space to host or to house a community room. And um, we have limitations on our ability to accept electronic waste. Um, and these are many priorities that we've heard from the county as we've reached out and done community engagement. And so really it just lacks some of those necessary features for program growth. Next slide, please. So that really leads us to our initiative, which we have called Enhancing Environmental Health Services. We did some extensive uh, community engagement and following that feedback, we started looking at how we could design a new system to improve accessibility, to improve participation, um, how we can improve our system to really align with those county goals of well-being and consistent with the residents first approach as I talked about in an earlier slide. So recommendations from residents we heard were around expanding the focus of our current programming so not only to include environmental protection, but really to include racial equity, health equity, environmental justice, economic be benefits, and all of this while increasing opportunities for residents to reduce, reuse, repair, and recycle. Next slide, please. So this is a visual, kind of just gives you a more um, visual representation of some of the things that I've been talking about as far as um, the community engagement that we did and, and what we heard from community as far as the need for environmental health services redesign. On the left slide, you'll see some confusion. Um, folks, I don't know where to bring this. I'm confused. I'm not sure what goes where. And um, that's from that community feedback that we heard that the current system can be frustrating, inconvenient, unwelcoming. There's inequitable access to services for some residents and household hazardous waste really continues to be improperly disposed of in the trash and uh, sometimes poured down the drains. 
So some of the solutions that we heard from residents, and you can look to the right side of the slide where people seem a little bit more happier and a little bit more engaged. Um, so some of the solutions we heard were more comprehensive services, including electronic waste collection. That's something we heard multiple times. Extended hours, a location that's accessible, convenient, welcoming, less confusing, services that address gaps and providing a house side collection service, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. So next slide, please. So our proposed environmental service center, here are some uh, pictures about uh, what that proposed environmental service center might look like. We'll continue to offer services for collection and transfer of household hazardous waste as we do at Bay West. Um, when we talked about what some of those items were, the facility would also include space for community education, fix it clinics, and a retail space for residents to provide products for reuse. So we currently do have a reuse room and we would continue that um, a bit expanded. So um, some of those key components of the system redesign are that it has better addresses equity and environmental justice, serves more residents, accepts more items such as electronic waste, is more cost effective. And um, we could also have space for education and training rooms and some outdoor educational spaces, expanded more inviting reuse room, as I said, and support the expansion of services such as the potential for a house site collection program. And now I'm going to turn it over to Property Management Director, Jean Kruger to lead us through the site selection. Thank you for that, Ray, and uh, good evening, everyone. So based on the proposed program services that you just heard about and some insights we were able to gain from other counties that have similar facilities, the project team worked to put together the desired criteria for the site on which we would locate this new environmental service center. First and foremost, as a Ramsey County facility, we were looking that it be located in Ramsey County. And as many of you know, there is not a large amount of undeveloped land in Ramsey County. So we look both at internal county properties as well as external are those not owned by the county. It was a, expressed by the community that they wanted the new facility to be in close proximity, um, ideally with a drive time of 15 minutes or less for most of the residents within the county. So ideally, that puts it pretty centrally located within the geography of the county. Based on the services that were to be incorporated into the center and the space needed to properly receive that material, um, store it, and then have it be removed through various service providers, we determined that the site for the service center should be at least five acres. That would allow us to accommodate all of the uh, services within a building of sorts, create that space for some outdoor and educational activities, as well as accommodate the vehicles uh, coming to bring materials to the facility. We set as the ideal uh, solution there that we would be able to provide service to five cars at a time and be able to um, hold or keep in the queue at least 20 cars, meaning that those cars would be on the site and not uh, being a traffic issue onto the adjacent streets or roads. We wanted it to be close to a major road for access, accessible for trucks, specifically related to the removal of the materials that are uh, dropped off at the center. Best to be a site that was relatively flat, um, easy to accommodate a paved surface, not have to deal with a lot of slope on the site. We wanted to identify a site that would minimize the impact on surrounding uses. And we also wanted it to be in a location and a site that we could have be readily recognizable by the community and accessible by the public. 
Ideally, that access could be for residents in close proximity um, arriving via uh, a pedestrian or on foot. Perhaps some neighborhood uh, folks would be able to access by bike and hopefully within reasonable proximity to public transit. Obviously, as we said, being able to accommodate those folks bringing materials in their vehicles. So based on these site criteria, as I said, we look both at properties the county owned as well as properties uh, available within uh, Ramsey County. Next slide, please. The proposed site that we're talking about right now, as shown here, is located at 1700 Kent Street, which is just off Larpenter. This in fact is a site currently owned by Ramsey County. We were all in all quite surprised to, to find out that we had a site uh, within the county ownership that really does a great job of meeting the criteria that we had uh, identified for this site. What you can see here outlined in the dashed white line um, is the whole of the site that the county owns right now and is currently utilized by our public works department. The portion that you see cross hatched with white is roughly seven acres, so even larger than the five acres that we wanted for a site, but we would propose locating the Environmental Service Center within that crosshatched area, as shown here, likely closer to the south or to the bottom of the drawing you're seeing, therefore still allowing the access for the vehicles in and out and around the facility while keeping, again, that traffic queue all on the site. The north part of the property that's not crosshatched right now would continue to be used by our public works department for their various staging and storage activities associated with their projects. So again, it's located just north on Larpenter and accessible currently via an access road at Kent Street that would be um, rebuilt to accommodate the services at this center. So we were very surprised and honestly thrilled to learn that this site already county owned rose to the top of the list because of all of the site criteria we had identified and the site's ability to meet those criteria. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned previously, being a site in Ramsey County and this drive time or proximity to residents truly was a key factor. This drawing uh, or map of Ramsey County that you see on the left, the red dot roughly in the center of the green represents this proposed location at 1700 uh, Kent. And what you can see here is that the darker green area uh, is the, is the region or the area in which residents would have a 10 minute or less drive to the facility. The lighter green area represents that 15 minute drive time. And as you can see, within a 15 minute drive time does incorporate much of Ramsey County, certainly not quite all, but really does achieve that goal of being you know, centrally located and reasonable drive times for residents. What you can see on the right-hand side are some of our neighboring counties and the facilities that they have for their facilities. And as you can see, they too have their facilities really centrally located within that geography to ensure that residents have a 15 minute drive or less uh, to reach those facilities. And we did talk with several of the other counties and certainly learned from them a good bit about their centers and how we would be able to incorporate um, the, the, the positives that they've seen and the lessons learned that they've had. With that, I will turn it back. So next slide, please. Thank you. So we've been doing a lot of talking and we wanna give you some ideas of um, what Environmental Services Center might look like 
part of our process was to tour some of the local facilities, particularly the Washington County facility in Woodbury, which you'll see on the upper left corner. Um, that is a facility that has many of the features that we would like to incorporate or are thinking about incorporating and address many of the issues and concerns that we've heard from residents. So that's an existing facility in Woodbury. Folks are welcome to go there um, and uh, take a look at that and get some ideas of what we're thinking about doing. Um, there's also an existing facility in Dakota County, the bottom left called the Recycling Zone. That's another, um, provides some other ideas for us. And then um, an existing facility in Elk Grove, California, which um, I have not been to. I'm not sure if anybody on the call has actually been to that facility, but it does again have some of the features that we are considering for an environmental service center here in Ramsey County. And then um, on that uh, right-hand upper corner is a, a in Pope Douglas, Minnesota. They are also in the process of designing a facility. And so they had some conceptual renderings um, developed and that's what you see there. Next slide, please. So um, one of the, um, this is an example of what uh, the drive up space could potentially look like. Um, if folks are familiar with the Bay West facility right now, you, there's, a, there's a covering, but you're still outside basically as you, as you drive through and drop off your, um, your products. And uh, the proposed um, model that we'd like to look at is um, where it's more covered. And so you're sheltered from the elements because we all know Minnesota winters um, can be a bit cold and brutal. And so this gives an opportunity for you to drive through and for the workers to be able to unload from your car without being so exposed to the elements. Next slide, please. So one of the things that um, we heard uh, from residents and community was about making the space really friendly, welcoming, accessible. And part of that is having space for community to gather. Um, we are currently offering Recycling Ambassadors, which is a training program. Um, and this would be a, a location where we could host those, as well as some of you might be familiar with our Fix-It clinics. We currently offer those primarily in the Ramsey County Libraries and other community centers throughout the county. This would be an opportunity to have a permanent site to offer our Fix-It clinics. And then just other educational spaces or you know, to be able to host um, other type of educational opportunities for the community. And so these are some ideas and some thoughts about what a space could potentially look like. Next slide, please. And then there's the outdoor space. Um, we have um, also heard from community again about the desire to have some educational spaces outside, community gardens, some other um, things that could be inviting for community. And so here again are some ideas and some thoughts about what could happen or, or um, be developed in some of that outdoor space around the building. Next slide, please. So funding source, how are we going to pay for this? Um, Ramsey County has what is called a solid waste fund. Uh, and this is generated from the Ramsey County uh, environmental service charge, or yeah, excuse me, the environmental charge. Uh, the county environmental charge, which you may, um, if you live in Ramsey County or if you have a business in Ramsey County and you get a trash bill, um, this is a charge that's added to that service. So um, the funds generated from this must be spent on solid waste activities and strategies. And this environmental service center is one such solid waste activity. So um, we have funds available um, for this facility as part of our solid waste fund balance. Um, the projected cost range right now is around 25 to 29 million. Um, there will be no increased cost to residents for this project. There'll be no increase to the existing county environmental charge as a result of this facility and the construction of the facility. Next slide, please. So uh, a bit about the timeline, we are here on the 18th of October at our third open house. Uh, we had another virtual one a few weeks ago. Last week, we had our first in-person at the Ramsey County Library. And next week, we will have another uh, opportunity of folks who are on the call tonight want to come in person. It'll be basically the same presentation. Um, but of course, there's an opportunity to interact with um, human beings in a live setting. So if people are interested in doing that, you're certainly welcome to attend another open house and you can come in person to the New Life Presbyterian Church uh, next Monday. 
Um, concurrently, we're also in the process of selecting a design build uh, team. So that process is going on um, concurrently. And um, we are anticipating entering into the design phase uh, this fall and that uh, taking about a year or so into the taking us into the fall of 2023 with an anticipated construction schedule, uh, about a two year construction schedule from fall 2023 to fall of 2025 with an estimated facility opening at the end of 2025. I do want to note um, that our current services that we offer at Bay West, that fixed site, as well as the mobile collection sites that we offer, will continue to be offered throughout the duration of this um, planning and, and, and for the facility. So our plan is that our services will be un, uninterrupted. Next slide, please. So. Um, as I said, we're in the process of evaluating uh, the request for proposals, which was released about a month or so ago. We have those proposals in, they're being uh, reviewed as we speak. And um, so that's part of our next steps. We are doing the community engagement right now with these open houses. We will continue with community engagement. We'll have a releasing a survey in early 2023. Um, and we also will be doing more of these open houses or community engagement style um, activities throughout 2023. The current ones, we, we have two that are online and then two that were um, in person, but both in Roseville locations. And we did that intentionally because we wanted to be able to have those uh, events close to the facility, the proposed facility and the lo proposed location. Um, however, this is a a facility for the entire county. And so we will be doing community engagement throughout the county um, beginning in 2023. And I will turn it back over to Sarah. Thank you, Ray and Jean. All right, so this is the portion of our discussion where we wanna hear from you. And so take a moment if you're on a computer, um, if you are on your phone, or if you have some type of electronic device and we're gonna use Mentimeter to engage you um, this evening. Um, so go ahead and type that website and the code that's there. So we'll give you a moment. We'll leave this up on the screen for a moment. Um, if you don't have access um, or just don't wanna use Mentimeter to provide comments, feel free to use the chat box. Um, and you can also certainly raise your hand. So what we'll do is we'll get people going on Mentimeter. I'll check the chat box with Filson and we'll also see if anyone has a raised hand. Um, towards the end of our, um, a few questions that we wanna get to um, this evening, we'll open it up for just general comments and questions. All right. So it's www.menti.com if you're on the phone. And the code is 5722-1064. All right, Katie, let's see. All right, so our first question this afternoon um, is what is most exciting about the new Environmental Service Center? So what excites you about what you've heard um, this evening? You can go ahead and type um, your thoughts um, right into um, Menti. And if you're still trying to get into Mentimeter, it's the um, website is right at the top of the screen. There we go. So take time, we'll, we'll take some time on the slide to get people going. Mine. All right, so what's exciting people? The e-waste collection, it's wonderful. One-stop shop for multiple services. Um, again, that one-stop drop-off site um, is exciting people. Community garden, okay. Fix-it clinics, those are always popular. Um, ease of access, okay. A shiny new building with outdoor spaces. Love it. 
what else is exciting about what you heard this evening? Katie, I'm gonna pause on this slide for a moment. If um, reuse of paint and other household supplies, I'm gonna pause on this question for a moment. And if you have a raised hand or if you wanna come off mute um, momentarily, we can do that also. So what is exciting about this? Check of the chat. More accessibility. Okay, so we're seeing some themes here. Okay. Anything else that's exciting you about this opportunity? All right. So let's move to the second question. Second question is what is most concerning to you about the new Environmental Service Center? What's most concerning? All right, no concerns. Oh, here they come. All right. Duplication of services. Okay. Cost. What other concerns do you want the county to know about? Consider. Okay, bike and pedestrian access. Okay. Recyclable or sustainable materials will be used? Very good question mm -hmm. or comment. Other concerns? Okay, what will happen if construction is significantly delayed? Okay. Okay, so coordination with garbage and composting programs. Good comments. Take one more minute. All right, let's go to the next one, Katie. All right, so what else does Ramsey County need to consider when building the Environmental Service Center? So what other things do we need to consider with this project? So as previously stated, recycled and sustainable materials, mm -hmm. use of alternative energy slash solar wind. Mm -hmm. What else do we need to consider? Use of local labor. Welcoming space. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Morale. Public awareness. Mm -hmm. Collaboration with school districts.
allow room for expanded onsite and return of reusable material back into the community, possibly repair. Mm -hmm. Very good considerations. Anything else you want us to consider? All right. What other, let's go to the next one, Katie. This is our last question. It's like people already jumped through. So what other outstanding questions do you have? All right. Um, question is, have you thought about using sustainable and recycled materials in the design? All right. Excited to see a plan to unweave the current confusing web of disposal requirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. What other outstanding questions do you have? Okay. So Katie, let's let's take this down and um, go to the. Oh, will you demonstrate energy efficiency? I saw that come in. Okay, very good question. All right, so let's let's go to the question slide and just you know again, this is an iterative process as was as was mentioned by Ray this this evening. Um, this is not the only opportunity for you to give feedback. If something comes to mind, um, you can definitely visit us at um, the website on your screen. But if you're on your phone, I'll read it. www dot uh, ramseycounty.us backslash ESC. You can also send additional inquiries to our ask eh at ramseycounty.us. Um, if you're a resident in this area, please share this information too with people um, in your area and in the community. We're looking forward um, to feedback um, on this process and, and launching this project. So um, we wanna make sure that people are, are engaged here um, there's also a comment form um, on the website and you can view the FAQ section on our website. So we'll take these questions and, and add them to our um, list of FAQs or our FAQ list online. All right, so let's stop sharing the screen for a moment. Thank you. Thanks team. Um, just looking around, I see that um, Commissioner McGuire um, you're able to join us. I think you were still logging in earlier. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, and so um, any outstanding questions that you all have? I know Philson, see you on my screen. Um, any comments in the chat or elsewhere that have come in this evening for questions? As folks are thinking about these questions, we have a few that we can kind of get started and then um, feel free to like come off chat or mute or add your question in the chat, but I'll share the questions I have in the chat and then read them off as well. Um, so we have a total of 11 questions and the first question is, will this lead to uh, duplication of services. I'll add that in the chat. All right. Go ahead, Ray. Sure. Hi, this is Ray. Um, short answer, no. Um, so the current services that we offer at Bay West and at our mobile sites will be transferred to this new facilities. So in that sense, there'll be no duplication of services. I'm not exactly sure if that's what the questioner was getting at, but um, I'll leave it there unless some, you know somebody has another clarifying question about that. So let us know if we didn't answer your question. Okay, all right. Perfect. Uh, the second one is, will recyclables and sustainable materials be used? Let me turn my volume up. 
So for the de for the design and development of the building, yes, I'm actually going to turn that over to Jean um, if she's available for to, from property management to address some of the um, requirements that the county has in regards to this. Yeah, thanks for the question. Thanks, Ray. Uh, the county in any new construction that we do, we turn to the state of Minnesota's SB 2030 goals around particularly related to energy and energy management. And so we will at a minimum be utilizing those in our, in our design and uh, selection of materials. We are looking even beyond that for this facility to, to really get at your question and see what uh, we can do to go beyond. But um, I can't specifically answer your question because we have not completed that design yet, but we certainly have that as part of our criteria out to the design firm, such that it is in, included in um, the decisions that we make as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Yeah. Um, the next question is, would, um, will, will this be bike and, um, pedestrian friendly. Yeah. Do you want me to take that one, Ray? Um, sure. <laughs> th thanks for that. And you know, as I as I mentioned earlier, it is our goal to make sure that it is accessible to all modes of, of transportation and transit. Um, certainly we know that you know allowing for access to pedestrians or or bikers is um, more within our control and certainly part of our uh, goals for the site. Um, you know, it's pointed out that, you know, the bus service does not run right by the building. It is in, I'll say relatively close proximity, but obviously, uh, you know, a bus route would not come onto the site, but hopefully would be close enough that those who do use uh, bus for, trans for transit would be able to use it uh, and get there. So we are considering all those in the design elements. Thank you, Jean. Um, this, I posted the question in the chat. Uh, what coordination will take place with garbage and com um, compostable, com compostable programs? So the see if I can answer that. Um, so one of the um, services we would like to offer, or we have thought would be helpful to offer would be our food scrap uh, collection, which we currently offer at um, our yard waste site collection sites. We would um, have that available. Um, coordination with garbage. Um, I don't know, John, do you have any thoughts on this or Pete? I, there's some other folks on our call here. The, um, John Springman is our supervisor of solid waste operations. Um, wonder if you have any thoughts about this. I can somewhat address it by garbage. Um, it could be interpreted as, uh, recyclables. Um, people may turn, you know, throw that in the, in the, uh, mix or the, uh, the heading of, of, of garbage. And yes, uh, some of the materials that we'll be collecting at this location uh, we're anticipating will be re uh, recyclables and will be managed as such. And I guess the way that can tie in then is it will actually reduce the amount, hopefully, that people would be generating um, in the trash can at home if this facility provides a spot for them to drop it off and manage it at a um, higher level on the waste management hierarchy. Wonderful. Thank you, John. Um, next question is, what will happen if construction is significantly delayed, which is a very good question. That is a very good question. So we do, as I said, um, have our current facility at Bay West. Um, and that contract, that current contract will go through the end of 2025, I believe is the uh, current contract we're under. So um, we have started discussing what a plan B would be, and we will be um, addressing that and finessing that as the months go on, because we will need to have um, an alternative if something were to happen with the delay of construction. 
Um, there's a couple of different um, avenues. One is that we do have reciprocal use agreements with other counties. And so, for example, the facility that I talked about in Woodbury, that currently is available to Ramsey County residents. And so that would be a promotion opportunity or, or some other type of um, community uh, promotions, uh, education opportunities where we would share more heavily about those um, reciprocal use agreements. Other things we've talked about potentially are our mobile sites. We do currently have mobile sites um, and that there are opportunities that we could continue those as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it is a possibility and we do, um, we are kind of concurrently um, doing some planning for uh, what we're calling plan B or, or um, worst case scenario type of planning. Thank you, Ray. And if folks do have questions, feel free to raise your hand as I'm reading um, these questions out loud. We can, I'll make space for folks to come off mute um, and say what they have to say. Um, we have three more questions left. The next question I believe would be for Jean. Um, will alternative energy be used at a site such as solar or wind? And I know this was shared in the presentation a bit, but. Right, again, you know, we are just selecting our design firm right now. We definitely will be exploring the renewable energy sources. Um, I can't answer it fully at this time. We'll just have to see how the site works um, for that and the uh, consideration of the alternate energy sources. So we definitely will be considering it. Thank you. The next question is, will this, would the facility utilize local labor? I would like to say yes. Um, <laughs> one of the current agreements that we have for our electronic waste recycling, it's a new service that we're offering through Repowered. And um, one of the reasons we chose Repowered was because of their mission and their vision. Uh, they not only recycle that electronic waste, they also um, have a re, a re I'm losing my words, but the um, a retraining program for um, folks who are uh, entering the workforce. And so um, part of the reason or a large reason why we chose them as a partner was because of their mission around that sort of fits with our mission, our economic and our environmental and our equity um, values. So um, that, that would go into place as well with this facility. Great, thank you, Ray. Um, the next question, I think it's the second, the third last question um, is, what features of the ESC will make it a welcoming space? And I do want to say a lot of this is shaping, at shaping as we grow. So if you do have suggestions or um, would like to share what you're thinking, please do do add that in the chat. But I'll hand it off to you, right? It, that is uh, exactly how I would answer this question. Um, is really is turning back. That's why we're having these sessions, and um, I'm so excited. I have two full screens full of folks of tiles on my screen right now. Um, which says to me there is interested community that there are folks who are engaged in this process. And that's the kind of um, ideas that we want to generate and we want to hear from community. Like what features will make it a welcoming space? Like we really want to hear that from community and, and um, be able to put that into our planning process. 100%, 100%. Um, the next question is, um, is there any collaboration with school district? That is a good question. We certainly at the county level in, in, in public health, we have collaboration with school districts, particularly for this project. Um, we haven't reached out to schools. We have reached out to the Rice Larpenter Alliance um, and to some of the other um, local community groups. Um, but at this point, we haven't uh, entered into any type of collaboration with the school districts for this project. 
And I'll just add, I think this is a point of consideration too that we, that we bring forward that we think about as a public health department and who we further engage. But I also think there's opportunities if you've ever um, visited our recycling and energy facility, we do public tours, we're getting back to that, right, uh, Michael? And, and so I think this is a huge opportunity um, to engage our young people um, when this facility is, is built. Um, and as you heard earlier, there was examples of, you know, what could be on the outdoor space, what could be inside. Um, so I think, again, um, just opening up those learning opportunities for our families and our young people um, is at top of mind for public health and environmental health. It's a great point to make. Thank you, Sarah. Thank You're welcome. You. The last question is, um, will the site, how or how will the site demonstrate energy efficiency? efficiency. I think I'll turn that back to Jean again. I think it, it was partially addressed by some of those building um, the the um, considerations that will take into effect with SB 2030. But Jean, you might have a more a better answer than that. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ray. I appreciate the extra few seconds there to think about that one. But, you know, it really is both the use of the uh, energy standards under the SB 2030, and I would say the, you know, lessons learned and the practices put in place throughout the county facilities currently uh, that we're using to drive down our energy consumption, energy use. Obviously, some of the, you know, some of the features that we'll want to include in it is some of the building automation systems, of course, LED lighting, as we, you know, have mentioned here, the looking into the renewable energy um, sources, etc. Um, ultimately, when it's built and we have the uh, consumption data around the facility, uh, just as we do with all county facilities, that information is um, made, made available uh, to the public. Um, and also reported through the various city and state websites, and we will then be able to report on our energy usage intensity. Um, so all of those things will come as the building becomes operational. Thank you, Jean. And I hope this conversation kind of just really shows how collaborative this project is meant to be and how we are really intentionally moving with the community's input in mind and trying to be as um, sensitive to that as possible. Those are all of my questions, so I'll hand it back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Felson. Thank you, everyone, for the questions. Again, um, if you think of anything, please visit us at that website um, where you can provide input. Um, uh, it's askeh at ramseycounty.us. Um, I just want to mention um, before we take any further questions or comments that our next open house is in person. Our last open house um, for this um, phase of our engagement is on Monday, October 24th from 5 to 7 p.m. at New Life Presbyterian Church um, at 965 Larpenter Avenue in Roseville. So I just want to make that plug really quickly. So um, tell your neighbors, friends, community to show up um, in that space. Um, We'll have um, refreshments and we'll also have um, another presentation and then opportunities for you all to engage in a discussion. Um, now I'd like to see if there are any final comments or questions from the group. All right, and you can come off mute, you can raise your hand, whatever you choose. Hi, Howard. Hi. How are you? How are you? A, good. How are you? Good. Good. Just a quick question. That last slide you showed had what appeared to be a tool library. Can you say more about why that's there? Yes. <laughs> we sure can. I'll head it over to Ray. <laughs> sure. Thanks for that, Howard. Uh, so that's um, a question that's come from community. Uh, partnering with either the existing tool library or creating a tool library. Um, if folks don't know what a tool library is, it's basically uh, a, a, a library, but instead of books that you check out and borrow, it's tools. 
So um, there's at least one here in St. Paul. There might be one in Northeast Minneapolis. There's a couple of them around. And we have had some conversations with folks from the tool library who are interested in collaborating with us. And so it's, again, something that's sort of in that design out there phase. And um, so I think that's how it ended up as a picture on the PowerPoint was it was it was out there in the ether of folks thinking about it as a possibility of something that could be that this center could um, include. Yeah, thank you for lifting that up, Howard. Thank you. Yeah. So another key consideration to a library, right? Excellent. And, you know, again, any additional partnerships, ideas, you know, what excites you, what concerns you, we still want to take those, that, those into consideration as we're moving forward. Um, any additional questions, as Howard mentioned, you know, to a library, could that be possible, right? Partnerships with schools, we saw that come up. Um, so um, we're open to hearing from you, um, innovation ideas and things that we should be thinking about. All right. Any other comments or questions for the group? All right, well, don't wanna hold you here, give you a lot of time back in your evening. Um, we just truly appreciate you joining us. Um, again, feel free to come see us in person next Monday um, and, and stay um, involved. We have a website that you can visit um, to, to kind of follow this journey, um, but we hope this isn't the, the last time that we see or hear from you um, as a community. And I just wanna say on behalf of Ramsey County and St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health, I really appreciate your time and energy here today um, and thank my team for putting together this, this excellent um, opportunity to engage you. Um, and the residents of Ramsey County. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here.